The Blazers now led three games to one and could wrap up the championship the evening of April 22nd. A crowd of over 6,000 watched the scoreless first period, and Dallas Smith's 55-foot slap shot was the only goal after 40 minutes. Then Omaha evened the score at 8:14 of the third period, before Lonsbury and Crisp gave Oklahoma City the momentum for another championship with goals four minutes apart. Cherry, out on the left of Lonsbury. Blazers trying to get on the attack ahead of Cashman. Cashman trying to get the pocket. Still free in Omaha ice. Rolling in the slot. Third over in the near side. Stolen by Cashman. Coming in. Florida. Lonsbury scores. Ross Lonsbury puts Oklahoma City on top two to one. Here's the face off for the near boards. Bradley kicking at it. It's passed down in the corner. Comes behind the blazer cage. Power play underway. Dallas Smith clears it out. Got it by the man. Up ice comes Bradley. Got the puck. Slides it through. Chris picks it up. Coming down one on one. Shoots it in. Those champagne bottles were heading for a victory celebration. Chris gets his third playoff goal. Paul Andrea came right back less than a minute later to score, and the Blazers took that 3-2 lead to the final 20 seconds. I thought I caught a slight smile on the face of Murray Davison. As he looks at the clock, knowing that Omaha has 20 seconds to get it back down to the other end. Chris now and Jim Johnson pucks down. Shot in the near corner. Clock running. Cashman in the corner. Gets it. Connick bumping in. Cashman trying to keep it there. Run out the time. 13 seconds. Now the Knights get it. Chris stole it. Knocked at the far side. They're not going to get out. Nine seconds to go. Irvin gets it. It's still three. Up with a Plager. They'll count it out for you. Here it comes. Two, one. I win it. Before 6,284 jubilant fans at the Fairgrounds Arena, the Blazers are Central Hockey League playoff champions again. Cheevers was mobbed. And now they'll have the celebration. 6,284 fans mobbed the Blazers down on the ice. It's championship time again for the second straight year. Blazer fans have never since seen as much big league talent at one time on an Oklahoma City team. 13 members of the 1966-67 champions went on to play in the National Hockey League. Most are still there. It was a victorious, exciting, nostalgic dressing room scene. With NHL expansion coming the next year, many of these guys would be opponents in the future. Hello again, everyone, from the victorious dressing room. Well, as you can well tell, it's excitement galore in here just like it was just about a year ago when the Blazers won it in Tulsa last year and tonight with a final score of 3-2 to two over Omaha. They have defeated Omaha in the final round of the playoff hey, series. Hey. I'm talking to Jerry Cheevers. They played a great game. Cheevers, you got a little cut on the forehead, but I know uh, you can't even feel that right now. No, there's no way I can feel it, Johnny. Oh, I'm going to have a sip of champagne first. <laughs> no, there's no way I can feel it. It's... Uh, well, as I said last year, there's nothing like being on a winner. And I really feel great being on one. And this is a great hockey team, boy, I'll tell you. I thought uh, if we could come out with one game in Omaha that we could win the series. And we did that, and we won it, boy. Let's talk now to Dick Cherry. Dick, uh, congratulations on a great season. I know this is a real rewarding season for you as being named the captain of the Blazers midway through the year and of course coming back after a layoff from professional hockey you've been with this organiza organization for many years uh, does this have to rank as one of your biggest thrills yes it does i think uh the first time i retired i was uh, on the championship club the same affiliation with boston and kingston and during the ephl and uh, probably again uh, i'll retire this year on uh, a winner again nice stand up in the winter well it sure is and dick i know that uh uh, you play with a lot of hockey players in your day, a lot of different clubs. Uh, have you ever seen one like this uh, club that uh, has ever stuck together so well? Tremendous spirit. I'd say the, uh, the team in Kingston had a similar spirit, but uh, they had a lot of experience. But this is just the exuberance of youth here. Man, they're <laughs> really, really flu. Now well, with the sounds of Oklahoma in the background, let's talk now to Murray Davison. Murray, congratulations. The youngest coach in professional hockey and a two championships in your first year. 
Thanks very much, John. It's a real thrill to be here. I'm very fortunate in having the team we had. I think that's the big point of any coach, I think, having a good club. Well, Muzz, we've talked about this a hundred times, but we got to say it again in this victory celebration. You couldn't ask for a more dedicated bunch of guys than this group, could you? You really couldn't, John. And uh, the point is, everybody knows in Oklahoma City, or they've read that we didn't make the all-star team. Uh, no one made the all-star team on this club. We ended up in first place. We won the, the championship in the playoffs. If we're not all-stars, or not personally, but if these boys aren't all-stars, then I don't know. I'll take them over the all-stars any day. Yeah, congratulations, Thanks, Muzz, John. again. Now let's talk to Bucky Buchanan because we want to get a chance to talk with each player while uh, we're in the dressing room. Bucky, congratulations on a great season. 34 goals in the regular season, five in the playoffs. The winner last night, another big game. I know you're happy. Oh, I'm very happy, John. Uh, to play with a club like this is a great pleasure for me. Uh, I don't think it'll ever happen again. Uh, the find such a club with a bunch of winners on it, it's just great. It's unbeatable. All right, let's talk to somebody else, Brian Bradley, who became the first Blazer ever to marry an Oklahoma girl. Hi, Brad, boy. Congratulations. How you doing, Brian? Thanks a lot, kid. Well, it was a great victory, and uh, I know you're just as elated as you were last year. Uh, what are your thoughts right now? Very happy right now. Not too often you win two champions. Two championships in the CPHL like this. We had good coaching this year. It really helped out. Everybody pulled together at the end. Ross Lonsbury. Let's get Ross over here, and we'll go down the line. Roscoe, congratulations on your goal to put the Blazers back on top at the time. Two to one, and of course we needed every one of them tonight. Cash made a good play for you, didn't he? Beautiful, geez. I didn't, what would I missed that? I would have cried for a week, John. <laughs> it's a beautiful play by Cash. The most popular blazer in the 1966-67 season, Glenn Sather. Congratulations. Thanks, uh, John. <laughs> Flats, uh, really, what do you think about this club? Is there any way you compare the, the uh, championship this year with the one last year? Yeah, uh, I think this year's team probably probably had had more desire than the other team last year we just kind of we went through it in a good way but this year we all the way right from the beginning that's what we wanted to win we wanted to win right from the start this year well, i know that you've left a spot in the heart of a lot of hockey fans here in oklahoma city and i think that they indicated it when they voted you most popular player well they i might have left some in their hearts but they should have left a lot in mine because i really like playing here now let's talk to terry crisp who was k gems blazer of the year this season he had a great comeback year. He had his greatest year in four years in pro hockey. He's now played on two championship clubs. Terry? Rookie boy. She's a nice feeling, eh? It's a great <laughs> feeling. There's nothing better. And Crispy, congratulations on a game-winning goal tonight. And uh, you've done that. You pulled that a few times this year, scoring a man short. And uh, the guy that assisted you on it was uh, your old nemesis buddy, Bradley. You're right, John. We uh, worked well together, not wanting to tutor nothing all year, killing penalties. We worked. And, uh, Tonight is just one of the times it did pay off for us working together. Here's Wayne Cashman who had a great rookie season. In fact, Cash finished third in the balloting in the league for the rookie of the year. Thank you, John. Really a pleasure to play in Oklahoma City. And we had a real great club and we really deserved to win, I think. Nothing. I've, I've asked this of all the rookies, but it's just nothing like uh, playing on a champion in your first year, is it? Oh, that's, that's the big thing, boy. You got that big start. Especially a club like this. When I was in training camp this year, all everybody just kept saying, "Where do you get to Oklahoma? Oklahoma? You won't believe it, you know." And I was really, really, you know, excited, nervous when I first came here, and then I came here, boy. And boy, it's a great place to play hockey. And it's no wonder they got championships here. The way the guys just love it here. They love to come here and play hockey. And with fans like that, they can't help but have champions. Kid Bill Evans, the general manager of the Blazers, out here, and we'll talk to Bill for a minute. Congratulations on another great year, Bill. Yeah, wasn't that something, John? I'll tell you. You know, it was great winning last year, but to do it again with our seven rookies, why well, I don't know what the odds would have been at the beginning of the year, but they have to be something tremendous. And I think that uh, Murray Davidson is just going to an A1 outstanding job following Harry Sinden in here, winning again. And uh, I'm sure that all the fans of Oklahoma City are just as happy as I am. The first two years had indeed been happy ones. Hockey was an established pro sport in Oklahoma City. With expansion of the NHL, the Central Hockey League moved to divisional play, expanding to eight teams. Dallas and Fort Worth each entered a team in the south, joining Oklahoma City and Houston. Kansas City was the new city to the north, along with Omaha, Tulsa, and Memphis. The Blazers kept their winning ways going and marched to the Southern Division Championship with a record of 38, 20, and 12 for 88 points. Tulsa captured the Northern title easily, and due to a very unorthodox playoff system, the division winners met each other in the playoff semifinals. 
It was a dream matchup. Through the first six games, each team won three times in their home rink. Oklahoma City enjoyed the home ice advantage for the final game, but the Oilers were not to be denied in an upset bid. Each team considered this to be the real championship game. General opinion was that the winner of this series would go on to nab the playoff title in the finals. The Oilers had built a 4-3 lead after two periods on the strength of a pair of goals 32 seconds apart in the middle period. The final 20 minutes opened as a closely checked period and remained that way with neither team enjoying many good chances the first eight minutes. Then a Tulsa penalty gave Oklahoma City a power play chance, but the Blazers couldn't take advantage. A penalty against Jim Lorenz a few moments later proved costly, and a minute and a half later, a lapse by the Blazers triggered this Tulsa score. As Randy Murray is up to center ice with the puck, down into the attack zone. Drives in, feeds it ahead to Payette. And the puck is in play. No offsides. Out to the point to Quinn. Underneath the Payette. Payette in tight. Look out. Across to the far side and a tip in for Haley. Tulsa makes it 5-3. to three. They worked the power play perfectly as the Blazers did not pursue the puck. A champion all year long, Oklahoma City fought back to make it a seat-squirming finish. Just over a minute later, the Blazers moved up ice. Here come the Blazers back out of their end. Bailey long pass on the right for Lazook. Bill gets the puck outside the blue line. Fires a shot in and a stick save for Aubrey. A 5-3 game. With the puck is stolen in front of the goal. Shot, no good. Puck is free. Kicked around. Bailey to Lazook. It's in. At 12-10 of the final period, the Blazers score on Lazook's goal. To make it five to four. But the night was to be one of frustration for Oklahoma City. Jean Pronovo missed a breakaway on the ensuing faceoff, and the game was never tied again. An open net goal in the waning seconds gave the Oilers a six to four win and the series victory. The game indeed had produced the Central Hockey League champion, for the Oilers beat Fort Worth four straight games in the finals. The Central Hockey League title banner was in the state of Oklahoma for the third straight year. The 1968-69 season opened on October 11. The talent was imposing with a mixture of seasoned veterans and impressive rookies. Still, no one could envision this as the team generally to be considered the best in the Blazers' history. Only twice in 36 home games did Oklahoma City lose at home. They produced a streak of 11 games in a row without a loss during the campaign. Their 40 wins, 19 losses, and 13 ties for 93 points is a team high. The Blazers breezed to the five-team Southern Division Championship, and again Tulsa captured the Northern crown. Despite a super team, the Blazers found themselves in another typical rough playoff in their semifinal meeting with Tulsa. The Blazers lost the first game 3-2, then won easily 6-1 and took the series lead with a 3-2 win at Tulsa. But the Oilers came back to shock Oklahoma City with back-to-back 5-3 and 4-3 wins at the fairgrounds. In the sixth game, with their backs to the wall, Oklahoma City won a super exciting 4-3 decision at Tulsa when the minor league player of the year, Jim Lorenz, scored on the power play halfway through the second overtime. One of the largest crowds ever to see a Blazers game, and a crowd called by Bill Evans, the most vocal and enthusiastic ever in Blazers history, jammed the fairgrounds arena for the deciding game the night after Lorenz's dramatic score. Through the first two periods, Oklahoma City built a 3-2 lead. The first half of the final period was filled with hard hitting, wild action, and lots of scrambles around the Oklahoma City goal before Tulsa defenseman Randy Murray finally tied the game 3-3. Three three. Some of the best hockey ever staged in the arena took place in the final 10 minutes of play. Both teams checked tightly, awaiting for an opening. It came during a two-on-one break for the Blazers. At shoots it across center. Glennie gets it back to Marsh. Atkinson takes it away. Possible two-on-one. Atkinson down on Nelson. Over to Lonsberry. The puck bounced off of his stick. End of the corner. It's still free. Atkinson to Harrison. Harrison comes in. Slides it in. At 13 minutes and 46 seconds, Harrison coming off of the board. Came right at Aubrey and slid it. Aubrey misjudged it, and it slid into the far side. Just made it inside the pipe at about a 90-degree angle. It's four to three. The final six minutes and 14 seconds were as wild as any Oilers-Blazers confrontation could be. 
The action was furious on the ice and even in the stands. Oklahoma City held on to its lead. And here are those closing seconds with the Oilers' goal open and an extra man on the ice. Woody behind the cage. The Oilers almost get it centered. It's on the corner, out front. Shot up ice again. It's going all the way. There'll be no icing. Lonsbury racing Glenny. He'll reach it. Lonsbury couldn't get it in. It's behind the cage. Lonsbury to Webster. He shoots it in. Lonsbury got the puck to Tommy Webster, and he shot it in off an Oiler defenseman. The Blazers will go into the finals. Before 9,324, the Blazers win the semifinal series by a score of five to three. The Blazers had attained their revenge for the previous season, but unlike Tulsa's easy skate to the championship after beating Oklahoma City in 1968, the Blazers found the ice more treacherous in 1969. Dallas was the opponent in the finals. The Hawks had won two shorter series in six straight games to reach a chance at Oklahoma City. These two teams had finished one and two in the Southern Division in the regular season, and the series started as if they would finish that way in the finals. The Blazers held a two-to-one lead on two Webster goals going into the final period. Webster had gotten both scores in the first five minutes and three seconds of the game and now had five goals for the playoffs. But he wasn't through for the night. Shortly after half of the last period had expired, Webster scored his first playoff hat trick. Wilkins coming back and backing up Beverly. Comes into his own end. Passes over to Beverly. Nick up on the stick of Webster. Ahead to Lorenz. Jimmy inside the blue line. Breaks now, feeds it over to Shock. Knocked down. Webster comes in. Webster scores! <laughs> Webster has just scored the hat trick to make it 3-1. to one. It was the fourth Blazers hat trick in the playoffs, but the dynamic rookie, later to star with Detroit in the NHL, set a new Central Hockey League playoff record for most goals in a game just 24 seconds later. Here's Lorenz on the draw, shooting. Gets his own rebound as it slides to the board. He centers it out front, and it's kicked off the side of the cage by Shock to Webster, who scores! sets a new Central Hockey League record. Picking up the rebound as, or rather, shocks feet out from behind the goal. Webster shot it by Norris to make it four to one. And that is a new Central Hockey League playoff record. First player ever to score more than three goals in playoff history. Webster now has seven goals and is only one away from tying the playoff mark of eight in a series. Webster was to go on and establish a record of 10 goals in the playoffs while linemate Jim Lorenz got nine and still owns the existing record of most points, 25. The Blazers went on to win the game 5-2. to two. However, individual success and not team accomplishments would be all that City fans would savor from this series. Dallas stunned the Blazers 6-4 to four two nights later and then stomped Oklahoma City 6-2 to two and 6-1 to one in Big D to take a commanding 3-1 to one lead. The series moved back to the fairgrounds arena, but the Blazers no longer dominated their home ice. They had already lost three times in the playoffs at the fairground. Oklahoma City, now riddled with injury, was playing without Jim Harrison and the third member of the webster Lorenz line, scrappy Grant Erickson. Dallas goaltender Jack Norris, an ex-Blazer, besieged all night by a furious Oklahoma City attack, still managed to keep Dallas close. The Hawks fought back from a 4-2 deficit to tie the game. Then just past the halfway point of the final period, the Blazers' hopes for a third playoff championship were doomed. Where Smear has possession for the Hawks. They move it up, Gaudet tips it on into center, and it's shot right back in by Gibbs and brought right back out by Turbenchi to Gaudet. Gaudet, a shot in on Gillo, makes the save. Gillo leaves it behind the net for Woodley. It's slapped out in front of the goal. Gibbs will retreat back behind the safety of the net. Now the pass up to Shock. Shock to Tremblay at center. Trombley trying to go through two men as double team. 
by Derbenci and Smear, and Mackey wheels out of there with the puck. Brings it all the way down for Dallas. Sends it over to McDonald, who scores! McDonald shoots it by the outstretched hand of Gillo to make it a 5-4 to four game. Well, you could almost see that one coming. McDonald has scored in his fourth straight game for Dallas and now has seven goals in the playoffs. The time, 10.03. And Dallas, for the first time tonight, leads 5-4 to four as the Blazers have blown a two-goal lead. The Blazers' chances were few coming down the stretch, and with less than half a minute, only a gamble remained for Oklahoma City. Blazers in their own end, 25 seconds from the finish. They once led 4-2, they trail 5-4. Passes to Lorenz, ahead to Webster. End to Dallas Ice, Carroll shoots it out in the center. 14 seconds to go, Dallas is going to be the Central Hockey League playoff champion as the Blazers can't get it out of their end. Seven seconds, here's Gibbs with the puck across center. Long shot and three seconds to go. Dallas is the playoff champion. The Hawks had spoiled another championship bid for Oklahoma City, but the first four years had produced five championships of sort, two playoff titles, a regular season championship, and two division crowns. The fifth and sixth years were not productive for Oklahoma City, but maybe number seven will be. There's a new coach and longtime American Hockey League star, Jimmy Anderson. There have been championship years before, there will be championship years again.